All right, containers out there boiling some water. It's uh, raining here. This is one of the spinoffs on the Peter Vans to uh, a little tropical storm that we're having here in the southeast. So I'm having to use my cover to keep the rain off me and my gear. It's one of those shower liners. It's doing a pretty good job. It actually had the magnets in the bottom of it. So I'm just using those as little, little buttons for tying down the corners here. I've got this uh, kitchen knife here in the orange so that if it's laying around it's going to be highly visible. Cigarette lighter, same thing, the majority color of it is international orange, nice and visible. It's about 80 cents at the dollar store. Here's cordage. I used some of the packing material from the, the sewing kit because I had tried to make the double, double braid, two-ply braid with the uh, jute twine and I was failing at that. It was making the uh, material was breaking down into its fibers which was not making me happy so I wound up uh, taking instead took a bunch of the strands I took one whole spool actually and a triple strand tied it off spun it up on, uh, using uh, one of Dave's simple machines the uh, rope spinner. I just took a, a, br a branch tied it off that and just hand turned it around. It took a little while. It took about 40 minutes, 45 minutes to spin it up. And then I took it and doubled it over and then spun it the opposite direction. So what I've got is basically a six-ply rope that I'm using as my ridge line here. Oh, it's pretty durable. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, that's the first five C's, right? Container, cover. Yep, that's it. Uh, I've got canvas sail needle. I bought one of these sewing kits. Now I've also taken one of the uh, needles and magnetize it using the battery pack from this little flashlight the candling device. Notice I said device. I'm actually impressed this little this little uh, one dollar flashlight it throws a pretty good beam out there for a dollar flashlight. And then the battery pack the way it's put together you unscrew the front of it and you've got access to the terminals. The terminal there and the body casing there and that's what I use to magnetize the needle. Because you can turn it on, you unscrew the top, bam. Because I was trying to figure out how I was going to make the current go through the needle. That's how I did it. Ah, oh, the duct tape. Yeah, not much said about that, dollar duct tape. Well, they had a 100% cotton youth t-shirt, and it's nice bright green. 100% cotton. Uh, it's in one of my kid's sizes, so when I'm done with it, if I don't use it for anything, uh, it'll become a t-shirt for them. But the 100% cotton bandana type thing, that's supposed to be used for filter, making char cloth. Uh, you can use it for other other things, but the big thing is filter, medicinal, you, know, you can use it as a bandage. Uh, then there's the handy dandy haversack that the dollar store provided for me. Now, going, up, going off of this, I didn't spend, I spent a little bit under $9. What I did spend money on was this little pair of needle nose pliers for taking the uh, wire hanger that came with the t-shirt and I turned it into other stuff. Uh, the bale on my container. Uh, I used it also to make some tines. I made a, uh, basically a frog gig. Uh, that's why I also used to punch holes in this, into the sides of the containers to put the bale through. Yeah, I used some of the... Uh, uh, oh yes, the uh, container. What the container was, was it was a 32 ounce tomato juice container. Uh, it would have held about 300 calories if I was having to drink tomato juice. I don't really like tomato juice. But instead I uh, punched the holes in the side. But to open it up I uh, used some Florida sandstone, also known as concrete, to braid most of the surface, the, the top rim of it, so that the lid comes open. Now I've left the lid attached, so I wouldn't feel too bad about trying to make char in this, which I might do in a day or two when I'm at home. I uh, just don't really have the fire set up for that. But I also built the tripod with a toggle for, for boiling the water, and it's slowly cooking up some. Uh, but yeah, it's a steel container, so I wouldn't feel too bad about trying to make char with it. Um, my original version of this challenge was... Uh, with an aluminum can, which yes, you could boil water, 
yes, I could have carried water. I don't think I would have trusted it to making char, because aluminum cans, if it gets hot enough to make char, and you've got it deep in the coals, it would probably melt down. Uh, so I didn't feel too comfortable about that, so I changed out, and I, got the to I had gotten the tomato can. And uh, you could carry that, and it wouldn't spill too much. Uh, so you could travel with water. Uh, so it would definitely fill multiple purposes. It also conveniently holds almost all of this little 10-piece kit, with the exception of uh, basically the cover com component. And everything else tucks into there pretty nicely. Uh, I was pretty happy with that. I'll take a picture of that when it's packed back up again. But uh, I've been happy so far. Uh, I had to change a couple things. This is the 2.0 version. Uh, the 1.0 version, I had had a Suntoco knife, which I thought had a full tang. It didn't. Uh, it started folding up with use. Uh, like I said, I had the aluminum can, and I didn't feel too good and warm and fuzzy about that. Uh, oh, compass. Yep, let me go ahead and show you the compass. All right, this is my second compass made out of materials from this from the $10 10C kit. And this one's made from the needle with the sewing kit that I'd put across the battery contacts <coughs> on the uh, LED flashlight and it magnetized it. Now the big thing is you got to make sure that the string is hanging in the middle of it so that it's not cockeyed. It's hanging level. That way it doesn't possibly put any type of bias into when, when it's pointing north or south. Well, it gives you a north-south line. And you have to kind of figure out which one's north by location of the sun. Right now I'm facing towards roughly north with my back towards where the sun would normally be up if you could see it without all the clouds. Well now it's pointing and... There's my k &R compass and it's pointing pretty much the same direction. Uh, wind's starting to blow so if you need to keep it out of the wind you can put it inside the shelter here. Now, uh, see if there's any, anything about this string causing a, a bias to it. It can, but it still is pointing relatively north. It's returning back to north. At least north-ish. Uh, about Within about 10, 15 degrees, which would be good enough for a rough approximation. Now to keep it safe, it comes with some foam here, and I had put the needle in there. That way I knew which one was the one that was magnetized. I also took one of the safety pins and made a uh, fish hook out of it using the uh, needle nose pliers. But those needle nose pliers got beat up uh, making the tines for the uh, frog gig. Uh, let me get the frog. All right, made a shadow board using the packing, some of the packing material at the store. They had some of the merchandise displayed in a box, and I used it as a shopping basket for picking up merchandise. The Nomen's made from the wire hanger that came with the t-shirt. Right now it's about 9 o'clock, so it's about two hours after sunrise. And that's pointing north, and that's where the compass is pointing north. So it's a little bit off, not too much. But the shadow is really faint, but that's that quick, going off the shadow board method. Yep, right there, two hours, bam. Then handy dandy, when you take the gnomon out of this so it's not sticking up, I found a little slot here. It tucks into there. Now, when I made the shadow board, I just used the string from the sewing kit and a needle to scribe the circle, scribe everything in here, and do the marks on here. And then I used some, duct, some of the duct tape to reinforce the backside so that way it doesn't wall out the hole. It's still wallowing out a little bit. but as you can see, the, the gnomon tucks in there. Alrighty, there's the shelter, my tripod. And... Frog gig, I'd taken some uh, the jute twine, and that's why I first used to secure the tines in place. And then uh, I wasn't too confident about that, so I added some of the duct tape to the outside of it. Sharpen these up also using that Florida, you know, limestone, sandstone concrete. Out here on the barrier island, we don't have a lot of rocks. Yeah, so I got some cinder blocks in the camp. This is a, this is a, my hearth from my personal space. Uh, this weather is not too bad. I'm going to get out in between uh, downpours here. But yep, this thing's nice and safe. It's about seven foot, seven foot long. 
that means that the sharp points are, if I stumble and fall or away from anything that would cause permanent maiming damage to me. Tomorrow or the day after, I'm going to go out and do a fishing experiment and try to see if I could gather some food. So I've got fire, got water boiling, I've got two compasses. If need be, I could use some of the edges on that can as cutting the edges also. So in addition to the knife, I've got that. All right, time for a little after action report. Got cleaned up and all that stuff after getting home. Repacked the equipment and stuff like that. All right, like I said, the little haversack that comes in. And I said that most of the stuff packed into that can. Well, everything except for the pack of cordage and the cover component. So, bam. That's about it right there. Now the jute twine, I noticed when I was repacking it, is uh, coming a little unraveled. Uh, I'm going to have to re-twist re uh, that some to make it stick. But other than that, I've been pretty happy. Like I said, eh, the knife, not too bad. The jute twine, this cheap stuff is crap. I mean, it really, a single ply is just not very useful. Um, shower curtain. Uh, amazingly enough, had magnets in there at, for the weights at the bottom. Uh, a lot more durable than the poncho I'd first bought the first time. A lot more durable, so that was nice. Nice surprise. Uh, wrapped it around my shoulders coming out because it was raining when I came out of the woods. Uh, this T-shirt could be done. You know, like I said, I could I could sew it into a, a haversack if I wanted to, but I've got the one container and. Uh, you know, it, it's primarily it's supposed to be for being used as like a, a, a bandana for filtering and turning into char cloth and stuff like that. I uh, had a little bit of an issue with the sewing kit, so I took some of the duct tape and secured that up some. Uh, still need to do the little test with the t trying to fish. This flashlight, even though I didn't really have to use it a whole bunch since it's daytime, but this is a, not a bad little flashlight for a buck. Oh, the cigarette lighter, the back side of it is black. So, I didn't realize that. I thought it was just decorative. Uh, so, but it's still pretty bright orange. Uh, it did fall out of my pocket. I did look around for it, and I did see it pretty quick because the orange showed up really nice. The pliers, hmm. Oh, I don't expect much from the dollar pliers. And the same thing with the duct tape. That duct tape was uh, not the best duct tape, that's for sure. But other than that, the, like the initial stuff, the, the first knife that I bought was a Sun Toko. That was a uh, that, that that bombed. Uh, the Poncho it bombed. I had to, I went out and that my 2.0 is running with these instead, and they didn't do too bad. I was really happy with that. Uh, a lot didn't expect much from from dollar stuff, and they actually performed a, a better than I thought that they would. Uh, definitely. Well, hope you've enjoyed watching this. This has been an interesting little thing. Uh, had to revamp or, or, or you know refresh a little bit of knowledge. Uh, the, the the simple machines, the rope twister, that was a, that was a good one to bring that back into mind. And that, and also doing the stuff for magnetizing the needle and making the shadow board and using the shadow board. Uh, that was uh, that was stuff that I hadn't done too much. You know, I watched the videos and done maybe a little bit with that but that's the first time I've gone through the whole exercise and the full full rigmarole you know, I've magnetized needles before but I haven't really turned them into a compass I know that you put them on a leaf in the whole nine yards and float them in the water or you hang them from the string uh, but I went through the whole exercise I had a lot of fun doing this challenge uh, I'll give an addendum here about the fishing experience because I'm going to go ahead and try to do that uh, tomorrow or, or the next day and turn it all in all right Sean, thanks for issuing this challenge, and it's uh, it stirred uh, a lot of stuff up because I've uh, seen a couple of videos and seen some other stuff that other people have done. It's really uh, it stirred up a little bit of a discussion there.